Hey guys, Rochelle here with Amethyst Ascension. If you are new here, welcome. And if you are returning, thank you so much for joining me again. So today I am doing a witch tag. Um, this tag was created by Ravenflower Channel and I will be putting a link down below. Um, this is a witchy tag and it has 22 questions on it. Um, while I do the tag, I'm going to go through a new deck that I received like a week or so ago, uh, the Penumbra Tarot. Um, and this is by created by Eris Elizabeth and uh, guidebook is by Ethany. So it is so beautiful. I was tagged by the beautiful Glennis over at uh, the Witch from Whitetail Hollow or the Witch of Whitetail Hollow. I'll be also putting a link to her channel uh, down below in the descriptions. So let's just get started. Okay, so I just wanted to show you a couple of cards really quick that came with the Prenumbra deck, an interview for your new tarot deck spread, and in the universe there are things that are known and things that are unknown, and in between them there are doors. William Blake. Now, I will say really quick, I did not put these in order. I've been using them, so I didn't... I didn't reset the deck, so. And here's the guidebook, which is quite chunky and wonderful. Okay, so the first question is, New Year's resolutions, do you believe in them? So I do believe in New Year's resolutions for some people. Um, I'm the kind of person I like doing small, uh, you know, like goals rather than super huge ones. I like taking baby steps because I feel like for me, baby steps are more um, attainable, more reachable. And then I just keep on going that way. But I'm the kind of person that if I set a certain goal for myself, and it's like a really big long-term one, I never achieve it. I think partially because I don't like being told what to do, even if it's by myself, anything that, and I like structure, but when I feel like I'm too boxed in, too structured, then it does the opposite for me. But for those who actually, you know, make big like yearly goals I say go for it why not so I do believe in them but I think that it depends on the person and whether or not that works for them and for me I like short-term goals uh, and that was question one and two because the, the second question was why or why not so three what is your favorite color one second okay so the third and fourth question are what are your favorite color or colors and four does your favorite color hold magical or emotional meaning for you so before i ever got into more things metaphysical i was a jewelry creator and i I started off with just like regular bead stringing um, and then I graduated into, and this was many, many years ago, graduated into bead embroidery. This is around a cuff. And I wanted to show you just a few of my pieces that I still have left. I used to sell on Etsy before a lot of people even knew about Etsy. These are the ones that I have left, and I don't know what I'm going to do with them, to be honest with you. Some of them, I mean, I just hold on to them. I did have them on my Etsy store. They're so expensive, though, because it was just lots of hours of work, you know, in my jewelry. And when I would sell at 
different um, events and stuff. Let me put those away. When I would sell at different events and stuff, I would always put on my pieces what all of the gemstones were and about color therapy, what the different colors mean. And it started off like that. And I used to create like rosaries. I used to create chakra bracelets, chakra necklaces, um, stuff like that as well. And I would even name my pieces. So color has always been a huge, huge thing for me. And that's why even like decks that are so colorful are just, I mean, they're it for me. So my favorite colors are, my first favorite color is green. And green, because it is like the color of you know, leaves and trees and grass and the hillside. And it's just so beautiful, especially when you put different colors of green together. It's just like so lush. But then also because green is the, you know, the color of the heart chakra, which I also associate with love and compassion and all that. And so... Green has always, it's also like a color of healing for me. And I mean, I have green eyes as well, but green, green has always been that beautiful, lush, you know, just, I love it so much. And then purple is my second, very, very close um, color that I love. Purple because it, I don't know, there's something about it. Even before I knew about like the chakras and stuff like that, purple is just so, uh, royal. It's so regal. It's so calming, but also because one of my things, the two things that I want the most, I should say, or desire the most is to be the most loving and compassionate person that I can be. And then also to know my own discernment, to always have discernment. So that is very much associated, in my opinion, with the heart chakra and the um, third eye chakra. You know, my pituitary gland and working with my intuition and psychic development and all that. That's enough of the jewelry. I just wanted to show you how much color has always played a role in my life and in what I create and how each one of those, I, I like I said, I would put on the tags or like when I would sell, I would have a whole rundown of what the colors represented for a particular, um, you know, like this one. I think it was like Indian Summer or I can't remember what the name of this is offhand or um, harvest, summer harvest, or something like that. I can't remember. Oh, there's Oliver. But it was very much when I started bead weaving and bead embroidery and making jewelry and learning about the color associations and the healing and magical properties of the gemstones that I used and or bones or shells or horn that I used in my creations, it, sometimes fossils, it, moved me into other areas of my exploration. So those are my two colors. So do you use substances for divination um, or meditation, meaning like flying oils, herbs, or alcohol? Okay, so I do not use any kind of like um, drugs, um, uh, you know, mind altering anything. Not, not that I see that there's anything wrong with it. I just, it's not right for me. Um, as far as like using incense, I will create my own incense or even incense that I have purchased that denotes a certain feeling or vibration when I am doing ritual or uh, meditation or divination 
I will use that. I will use sound, frequency music. Um, so yeah, yes, I do use certain things that I do feel like alter the mind, but not like, like chemicals, if that makes sense. But I don't see anything wrong with it to each their own. So, um, what is your favorite part of your practice? The favorite part of my practice, I really love writing spells, spell work. I love the the word usage. I like, sorry, that's Oliver. Um, I like the process. Oh, one second. Okay, sorry. I let him down and I let him outside. Hopefully he will behave himself. <laughs> um but I love being, you know, as a Virgo moon, I love, I love creating and planning what I'm going to do, the mindful part of it. That's what, you know, that, that's what I love the most, I would say. Of course, I love tarot and oracle, all that, um, divination. So question, uh, question eight, what is your least favorite part of your practice? My least favorite part of my practice. Uh, probably the cleanup afterwards because I like to use, well, I guess that's not the worst part of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the wor the least that I like to do, quite honestly, is probably the writing everything down. I mean, the actual spell work, the wording, I will write that down. But the actual ingredients, like what did I put into it? When did I do it? Under what moon did I do it? I don't write it all down because I just wing it. I wing everything, just whatever feels right. I do it. That's how I would create. I would even go through when I was making my jewelry and I would say, okay, I want to use that bead, that bead, that bead. I would just have a whole bunch of stuff in front of me and just start picking from it and then lay it all in front of me. And then it's like it would create itself. I, it's like I wasn't even there. It was like I was channeling these creations. And I've seen other people that are artists who just, they plan every part of it out. I never, ever did that. It was just... I was just always in the moment when I was creating it, almost like in the zone. And that's how I feel when I'm doing some sort of ritual or or working. I don't write it down. I don't really have a dedicated book of shadows or anything like that because I like to make it fresh. You know, I like to change it up every time, add new ingredients every time, just whatever feels right in the moment. So keeping track of it, actually writing it down. And I also have writer's cramp. So, I mean, even getting me to write in my dream journal every single morning, that's a lot. Or in my tarot journal, that's a lot because I have writer's cramp. So when I'm writing it down and I've got like this goiter like on my wrist that I've had for years, I think from all this, the bead weaving, you know, because when I would make the jewelry, it was just like this. And I did it for many, many years. And now my hands will go numb after so long of um, holding it like that. So it's hard for me to do that. Okay, so let's see. That was my least favorite. Number, uh, question nine. How do you feel your practice has grown over time? Well, for me, in the beginning, I felt so much the need to have all of the ingredients and the tools and all of that in order to do my practice. I mean, I had read a few books and they're like, okay, you need this color robe, you need these color candles, you need, um, you know, this particular herb for whatever reason. And as I got more into it and more into it, I realized, although I do like still doing that, I like the whole ritual of it. I like putting meaning into every layer of what I'm doing. However, 
there are days that I just simply, I'm just a mind, mindful witch. That's it. I'm just mindful about what I do, where I put my thoughts. Um, just lighting a simple candle, maybe throwing a little herb or oil on it, and I'm good. I'm good to go. It doesn't have to be all elaborate. I don't feel like everything I do has to be so elaborate anymore. Because I think I finally realized that the true magic it's all around us it's in everything and it's in us mainly in us in our beliefs and all that so I have way more confidence now I would say um let's see question uh question 10 is there a show or movie that inspires you so I'm guessing that this is a show or a movie that inspires me as far as my practice goes. And to be honest with you, not really. Not really. Um, the things that really inspired me from the very beginning was like the law of attraction, you know, the secret. I was, once I got a hold of the secret, read that and watched that like several times, I was like, my world changed. It opened up. And um, many of the books that I read, like Sylvia Brown and um, Dolores Cannon and my dream work, you know, stuff like that. That's what inspires me. My dreams drive me. I write down my dreams and it's amazing the realizations that come from the dream work. I mean, and I've always been a very vivid dreamer, but it wasn't up until a couple of years ago that I really, really started writing down all of my dreams and dating them and making that commitment to doing that. I'm sorry if you're hearing background noise. Um, I have people getting around. They're getting ready to leave for work and all that. I mean, there's, you know, five adults that live in this house, so you're going to hear a little bit. And then there, we have four animals, so <laughs> it's a busy place. Okay, so the next question is question 11. Do you have a familiar? Well, talking about animals, I have two cats and two dogs. And one just ran down the stairs. Um, my cats are always up in my stuff because I don't have a door on my witchy room down here. And so... I'll come down and I've got fur all over it because they've been all over my altars or my reading tables, whatever, you know. Um, but they cause more havoc than they, they than they help me. You know, they're just, it's like um, my, my cat, um, Smokey, he's one of those kind of cats, probably not unlike most cats, but he'll look at you if there's like a cup with water <laughs> he'll look at you while he's getting ready to push it off right <laughs> he's such a shit so um Sully I am so close with Sully he is my guy and I feel like I do communicate with him I mean I have had dreams where he has been in other lives but he was a human in those other lives um I do feel like he protects me sometimes from other things. Uh, but do I think that he is a familiar in the sense of familiar? No. He doesn't help me with my magic. So at least that's the way that I took that. So no, I don't feel like I have any familiars. But close, loving companions. Great loves of my life, actually, my animals. All right, question 12. Would you recommend any YouTube channels? Tons of YouTube channels. Um, Glennis, the lady who tagged me, the Witch of Whitetail Hollow. I absolutely love her channel. I love her. She is a beautiful lady. She's so knowledgeable. She's got such a beautiful smile, and she's so welcoming. And she teaches, you know, she's so informative. She's just, um, yeah, I love her. And Saturnarium, who I love her too. I love that she is not afraid to speak her truth, even when it may be contradictory to some people. 
you know, like, um, I mean, she's not like super controversial or anything like that, but she just says, this is how, this is how I feel and don't come at me more or less, but this is how I do my magic or this is how I do my tarot. This is what this means to me. And I love that about her. I absolutely love her. She's so informative. She's just a beautiful lady. She always sets the scene in all of her videos. And yeah, I just love her. Of course, I've got to call out my girls. I love um, uh, Courtney. Uh, stories, lore, stories, lore, and more. Um, and she's getting ready to come back. She's been off for a while because it's been a super rough year for her. Lots of loss and, and change. But she's such a trooper, a warrior. And she is slowly coming back and doing what she can. Um, I will put a, a link to all of their channels down below. Um, uh, Maria, very close friends with Maria of Lady Knight of Avalon. I absolutely love her. And I love when she does put out a video or when she does readings. She is such an incredible tarot reader. Um, I love Summer, Astaria Sen. Her channel, she is such an incredible artist, such an uplifting, smiley person. She's also, um, you know, living off grid now. Things, if you guys only knew half of the things that she has to go through just to be off the grid like she is. And she just does it with such grace and just such a positive outlook. You know, she's the kind of like silver lining kind of person, the kind of person when you go and watch her channel, she just lifts you up. I mean, her, her smile, her energy is just infectious. And I just love that about her. So, um, there are tons more. I mean, I can't even begin. I'm I, that I better stop there. Um, name something that you must do daily for your mental, emotional well-being or for your practice. Well, daily... I, I like to, if I do remember my dreams, write my dreams down. That's like the first thing that I do when I get up in the morning. Of course, I get a tea and a water, but then I sit down and I do that. Um, sometimes I will pick somebody's video first thing in the morning and watch that to kind of like wake myself up. And I like to get up usually when it's still dark out and the rest of the house is still sleeping and so I just have alone time. And I mean, even the dogs are sleeping <laughs> in my bed. And I get up to go to the bathroom, right, at, you know, 4 o'clock in the morning. And I come back and they've stolen my spot. And rather than argue with them or try to move them, I just say, okay, fine. It's coffee time for me or tea time, whatever. And they take over my bed. But I love them. So it's worth it. Um, that, these are the backs and that's the gilding. It's like a copperish, like a rose gold. Isn't that such a beautiful deck? So, um, I will show another deck while I finish this off. I'm sorry. I know this is going to be a little bit longer of a, um, video, but there's 22 questions and I like to talk a lot. So there's that. Okay. So the next one I'm going to show is another new one that I got the Farhaxa Tarot. This is by MJ Col Colonon. Here's the guidebook. Beautiful. There she is. Okay. So the next question is, <laughs> <laughs> That's Oliver. Okay, sorry. Dealing with a puppy dog yet again. Okay. So, um, what is something that started as an obstacle but you can now see as a blessing? Hmm. Now, I talked about this um, in previous videos. And that was the fact that I came to Tarot and oracle so late in life at first i seen that as an obstacle because 
I started it when I was like 47, 48, almost 48 years old, I believe. And as I get older, my memory's just not what it used to be. But I really just buckled down. I took a course. I read tons of books. I used my cards. I made cheat sheets. And I just, I did readings and readings and readings and readings. And now I feel like I am grateful that I didn't learn the tarot when I was, you know, 17, 18, 14, you know. And the reason is because tarot takes on a different meaning for me. And I'm not saying that somebody that, that, is, that is that young can't have knowledge and have been through many, many things in their lives. They absolutely can. But as a almost 50-year-old woman, I've done a lot of living. I've had my two children. I've been married for over 30 years. I have seen ups and downs. I've had tower moments. I've had anything that you can think of in the tarot. I've pretty much been through it a few times. Okay? So I can easily, easily relate to cards. I mean, they take on such a deep meaning for me. And I was also able... Because I am not, I've gotten to the point in my life where I know what I want and I'm confident that if I work hard enough, I can get what I want. But I'm confident also in my ability to learn something. I am confident in myself in general. So I don't second guess myself. So I am, I, I know what makes me tick. You know, I was doing shadow work before people even knew what shadow work, or before I even knew what shadow work was, okay? I didn't have a technical term for it, but I was facing my demons all, all these years. So, I'm just, I, I know myself pretty well, but I also know that I've got a long way to go, you know? The minute I stop learning is the minute I'm dead, but now I... I see that as a blessing that I came to the tarot so much later, but with so much experience. That's how I feel about that. Um, let's see. Which do you prefer? This is question number uh, 15. Which do you prefer? YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok? YouTube. Um... I am very, very seldom on Instagram. I know I, I should do better, but listen, I'm old school. I'm 51 years old, going through menopause, which, oh my God, Lord help me. Um, and social media is just, I'm just not like that good at it, you know? It's hard to keep up. When I was doing my jewelry, I was doing... Um, Etsy and had like over 5,000 friends on Facebook and was advertising all the time my jewelry and, and, and supporting other people and their jewelry. It was just a whole big community and I got so burnt out. I just, I canceled it all just because it was too much. And then my husband years later, just for family and stuff, started up my Facebook again. So I like, I stick to certain groups on Facebook, but the whole, you know, sad story that people are always doing on social media and airing out everything on social media, I just can't do it. I just can't be around that kind of energy all the time. So Instagram is better than that, but Instagram, I still don't really know how to do a lot of things on Instagram and TikTok, not really. Um, so yeah, it's YouTube, it's YouTube for me. And I know that that's even been lacking, but I'm going through some healing right now. I had a procedure done and I'm going through healing. And so that has even been, you know, uh, much less and it is what it is. So yeah, I like YouTube. I'm sorry. This is so long. I know. Um, let's see. 16. What do you feel is missing from our witchy community. I mean. I I couldn't even begin to answer that question. I don't. 
know of anything that's missing. There's so many channels out there. You know, pretty much you type in anything that you want to learn and you can find it on YouTube. So, yeah, uh, I don't, I don't see anything that's missing. Um, how much, uh, question 17, how much space do you use for supplies and spell work? Well, I have this whole big witchy room downstairs in my lower, lower area of my home. And then I also have, um, some of my stuff up in an office that I share with my husband upstairs, as well as I've kind of taken over her bedroom too. So I have quite a bit of space for like my witchy stuff and what I do witchy, uh, spell work, supplies, yada, 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 you name it. Um, let's see, what's the next question? 18, how many altars do you have in your home? I have five, five altars. Yeah, five altars. I have um, like my herbal altar. I have like my main altar. I have um, an altar for like love and compassion and Kuan Yin. I have a big Kuan Yin on there. I have like a Fey altar and I have a prosperity altar. But I have also areas in different places that are also for other things. You could probably look at them and think that they're altars as well. And they kind of are. I mean, it, it all depends on what you would consider. I just call them all like my sacred spaces, you know. All right. Um, 19. What is your favorite Sabbath? My favorite Sabbath is probably... Samhain. I just love saying it's the season of the witch. And I love that song, Season of the Witch. <laughs> but I have such fond memories of Halloween. But oh, there's the boy. He's always whining. He always wants something. Um, I just love that time of year. It's before it's like so cold. It's before the snow. I mean, it's crispy here. Don't get me wrong. I'm in Michigan. It is, it's crispy here, but you can still walk outside with a jacket and enjoy the evening and it's before the cold comes. It's like later fall and still there's orange and red on the trees and falling leaves. It's just, it's just such a beautiful time of year. So, yeah, I would have to say Samhain. And I like doing um, divination around that time of year. And that's also when I do my year ahead spread is on Samhain. Um, 20. Do you prefer tarot, runes, oracle deck, or pendulums? Well, I absolutely love tarot. But I love oracle just as much. I like pairing them. Sometimes I just feel like using tarot by itself and sometimes I feel like just using oracle by itself. And if I'm being honest, I probably have more now, I'm, I think, oracle than what I do tarot. I would have to count it again. I think I do though. I mean, I still think they're close, but maybe like 10 decks or 20, 10 or 15 decks more of oracle than I do of tarot. Besides, I have gotten rid of um, many decks, you know, passed them along to other beautiful people. Okay, so let's see. Question 21. Are you out of the broom closet? Well, my family knows, absolutely. Um, however, I don't make a show of you know, it's not like I go around saying to the world, I'm a witch, I'm a witch, I'm a witch, I do magic, I believe in magic, I believe in this, I, I believe in aliens, I believe in, um, you know, working energy and stuff like that. But I, if somebody were to ask me, I also am straight up with them. I, I don't have anything to hide. I am proud of my beliefs. Um, yeah. 
So no, I, I'm not in a closet, but I'm also not screaming to the world either. And 22. And I'm sorry, I want to get through this completely. Um, who am I going to tag in this video? Oh my goodness. Well, I would like to tag Courtney from um, Stories, Lore, and More with Erie. Erie's Witchcraft, I think, is the name of her channel. She will be linked down below. I would like to tag Maria, Lady Knight of Avalon. I would like to tag um, uh, Summer from Astaria Sen, if she can. I know that um, she's just... She's just a hardworking lady and she's got a lot on her plate and she's also like off grid. So it's not so easy for her to do videos sometimes. But if she can, I would like to see her do this tag. Um, yeah. But you, if you're interested in doing this tag, and I think it's a great way always to get to know other people in your community and to learn new things, um, do it. I tag everybody that has not been tagged and just wants to do it. So, yeah. Thank you for joining me, guys. And I actually got through two different tarot decks. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, two different tarot decks <laughs> during this. So, thank you for joining me. And I am sending you love always.